All right, it's the middle of winter, but I started a project last August, and I think it's time to go back and see how this turned out. Let's go. So last night, a really cool idea came to me, and it's kind of a hybrid between two different methods of rooting figs. It's taking air layering, and then also Dan Foster's method of rooting green softwood cuttings and combining the two together to get these cuttings to root faster and more reliably. Air layering further down a stem where the wood is more hardened off and lignified takes a lot more time. It can take up to six weeks for those roots to start coming through. The softwood cutting method seems to work really reliably for Dan, but I've heard other people say that it didn't work so well for them. And once you sever that cutting from the parent plant, it's either going to make it or break it. When you combine the two together, you've got the benefits of air layering where that branch is still attached to the parent plant and also the benefits of using the softwood green material that roots so fast. I think this happy little marriage is gonna be fantastic. Let's give it a shot. All right, so I'm all set up here. I've got my Italian 258 fig tree here and it is just putting on some massive vigorous growth here. I've got some saran wrap and then I love these little root pods. I'm gonna use these smaller root pods because we're gonna go after some of those smaller little branches down in there and try to do some of these green wood cuttings. All right, so you can see this branch here is just soft and supple. And basically what Dan does in his videos, is he comes along and he clips it really high up on this growth. He doesn't get down into the lignified wood and it roots. So what I'm gonna do is air layer this right at the same point that he would take the cutting so all we should have to do is just bust a leaf off and now you've got your exposed wound right at the leaf bud or leaf node and we're going to put this little guy around here i don't think we're going to need rooting hormone at all i think all we're going to need to do is just put this air layer pod right around there clamp it down i love these little things they got a snap on them and everything. And that's it. The last thing I'll do, because it is hot out here and we've got the sun just blasting down, is I'm gonna put some aluminum foil on there so it can reflect some of that sun and not heat up too much. We're still pretty hot. You know, this is uh, August in the Pacific Northwest. It tends to be uh, drier and hotter this part of the year, all the way into September, typically. We have long, Indian summers here generally and our summers are usually later in the later in the month so we got lots of sun going to be beating down on this for a while so I think there will be plenty enough warmth in the air to keep that warmed up the only thing I was worried about was the weight of this weighing such a tender little uh, branch down but I think it's going to be okay now the only thing that could go wrong with this I suppose is if the whole thing rots in there which I don't think it will uh all we did was strip one leaf and so i can't imagine that it would rot because it's really actively growing fast it's still connected to the parent plant i really feel like it's going to root like gangbusters in there i think even if it doesn't grow roots we haven't hurt the branch at all it's still going to continue growing because it's intact so i think this is going to be a win-win situation no matter what happens so here's another branch on the other side, and I'm only gonna come down a little ways. Here's the top of the branch. I'm coming down with one, two, three, four leaves here, and that's only about four or five inches. And we're just gonna pop this guy right on here. Snap it down, hopefully. There it goes. And the weight of that does worry me a little, but uh, I can always use something to prop that up, I suppose. But even if it weighs it down, I just want to make sure that doesn't break. Even if it weighs it down to the hay there, that would actually be better because then the, I think it's going to work out. The weight of the uh, branch can weigh it down and it's still going to just lay on the hay there and be fine. All right, let's get some foil around this protect it from that sun I'm trying to kind of wrap it so I can check on it from time to time if I need to 
we'll see what happens all right yeah that actually is just fine it's going to weigh down to here so there it is we've got two little air layers on those small branches there i wish this would have come to me a little sooner i would have started earlier in the year like i said we're at august 23rd now so it may take some time for this to actually work out but uh We'll give it some time. We'll see what happens. I think we got plenty of warmth. I'll come back when something's happened. I'm hoping for two weeks roots. All right, I won't drag it out and make you wonder. There it is, guys. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about this mess that I've got going on in this bin. And before you click away, maybe we can learn something from this and do better next year. We did get one positive result, and I'm gonna show that to you now. So first of all, that's the pile of destruction. I came through a couple weeks ago and thought, you know, it's time to pull these things down and see what's happened with them. I was pulling them out of all these little air layer pods here, and I wasn't seeing anything. There wasn't a single root on any of these cuttings. There wasn't even callus on most of them inside of these little pods. But I did notice one thing. There was a Black Madeira KK cutting that did root. So I did what every good fig grower would do. I potted it up with all those cuttings I had just recently to see if it would just continue growing roots and do well. But almost immediately, it started shriveling up. It grew some fungus here around the top, and it just didn't make it. So I'm going to pull all this plastic wrap off here and show you what I found, hopefully there's still some roots left in there. And it looks like they've all rotted back pretty much, but maybe I can show you this. So if you look real closely on this cutting, you can see all those little areas right there. Those are all little roots, not worms. And they were growing out from this little cutting. It was the only one of all of those air layers that we did that rooted. I had this awesome theory and I just knew it was going to work. I was really excited about it at the time. However, after months and then finally going into freezing weather, nothing happened except for this one Black Madeira KK, which couldn't be transitioned into a pot inside the house. But not all is lost. Let's go through this for a second. First of all, I did all of these way late in the season. I think if I remember right, it was like August 24th. It was really far into the summer. It was hotter than heck at the time. I thought I had plenty of time, but the sun was starting to slowly go down on the horizon and we were approaching fall temperatures and characteristics. And it just, it, it was probably later in the year than we should have been trying to start this kind of project. If I had started this in late June or early July, I might've had better results. The other thing is this, I thought by stripping a leaf off, it would be enough of a wound to send out roots. Apparently it wasn't. When Dan Foster does his, he severs them completely from the plant. He puts them inside. He gets roots in two weeks, but those roots come along because he severed them from the parent plant. I didn't do that. I thought I'd be able to combine the best of both worlds and it didn't work out. So that leads me to think it does work. We found out it worked. It worked with the Black Madeira KK on one of these, one out of 15. How can we improve those results and get better results next time? Well, start them earlier in the season for one, but two, maybe we should be trying to girdle the little green wood on the outside of that cutting. Maybe I should take just a little, a, a little shave off of the bark, a little layer off all the way around and see if that doesn't work. I'm still convinced after seeing Dan's videos and seeing how fast they root for him that something like this will work it probably just has to be tweaked a little bit. So did we learn anything? Well, yeah, we probably shouldn't be rooting them the way I tried. Don't wait too late in the summer and we may have to girdle these things in order for them to fully root. So I really wish I could say that this one worked out better than it did, but in the end, it didn't. What are you gonna do? It's just one of those things. So we're gonna move on. We've always got this summer coming up. I'm excited to try this one again, but like I said, earlier in the season and probably girdling those little tops, but I think by focusing on that green wood, that new current year's growth, like what Dan was doing with the cuttings, I think we're gonna get some good results here. I, I just need to keep pushing through. We're gonna get there. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from this. I know I sure did. 
I hope you have a fantastic week. By the way, hit that like button if you guys like this one. You'll like the next one better, trust me. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Oh, wait, guys, there's more. So I just finished filming, and I'm over here emptying all those pods out, cleaning my mess, and look at what I found. I hadn't gone through all of them yet. I thought we only got that black Madeira, but look at this one. This is La Bourgeoisie, and it got roots, too. That La Bourgeoisie rooted. Look at that. Look at all those roots. It worked on that one. And then we had a Smith right here. Not a lot of them, but there's some serious roots on there starting. So that's three out of 15. Maybe there's something more to this than I realize. And a little sooner in the season and roughing up that bark might be what pushes us over the hump. Anyway, I had to show you guys that. It was exciting to me. All right, that's it. <music>